Hi guys, it's Jake at Canadian Cutting Edge and I'm having a great time today. I've got a knife review for you. Have you seen one of these before? It's a nice frame lock by Ganzo. It is the G722 in green and in orange and they've got it in black G10 as well. I don't think they've got it in a camo. No, I don't think so. I think it's just these three colors, green, black, orange. It's a big, chunky frame lock knife. If you do not like heavy folders, you might not like this knife because this is a heavy folder. It's a chunky beast. Just, do you hear that thud? Come on down to the tabletop with me and we're gonna take a good close look at Ganzo G722. Come on down. All right, let's get started. Now, just for a reference point, this is the Ganzo 727M, the G727M with wooden scales. So these knives are just slightly longer than uh, the 727, but they are bigger and heavier. So uh, take a look at that blade. Uh, we've got a flat grind. Uh, it's not a full flat. You've got uh, an area up here where the grind doesn't come up. Really thick spine sitting there. The spine on these blades is, yeah, it's like 530 seconds thick. That is right around four millimeters thick. Whew. No wonder this thing weighs eight ounces on the nose, eight ounces, 727 grams of knife. You hold this in your hand and you know that you've got a knife in your hand. Uh, if it's got a nice swell here in the belly, so it holds really, really nice. But as I said, you've got this flat grind and a sharp edge all the way around. On both of mine that I have, the grind goes right down the middle, just like it should. So they've done a really good job with the grind. They've got a sharpener's choil here, so when you go to sharpen your knife, you can sharpen it right to the end there without making this look ugly at the, at the back part of the, uh, of the grind. You've got dual thumb studs, uh, nice heavy thumb studs that got a nice little tiered system going up. Uh, a nice flat area here if you've got one of those clamping systems like your old school Lansky to sharpen your knives. That will work really, really well. So you've got eight ounces of knife and then you've got this frame lock. Now, I wanna show you something on this frame lock. Check that out. I'm gonna close up right here, make sure that this focuses. Look how thin that line is. There we go, now it's focused. That line that they cut for the uh, for the frame lock arm out of this one piece of steel, that's as thin as a hair. That takes high-end equipment to do that. You know, it's not just some guy with a hacksaw. I know that's super over hyperbolic exaggeration, but there's a lot of frame locks made by companies that sell their knives for a whole lot more that have much thicker cutout areas for their frame locks. And then it's got, they put in this built-in stop for it so you can't overextend the frame lock. And um, there's the little hole that holds the detent in. And yeah, that sound when it locks, it just clunks. No problem at all. The, bearing, the uh, sleeves, it doesn't have bearings. It just has washers in there. These washers are primo smooth. They are uh, brass, brass, <laughs> bronze washers on there. I was, I was thinking, I was trying to mix brass and bronze together in one word, wasn't I? Yeah, you got those washers in there and they move very, very smoothly. I have not adjusted the pivot on either of these knives. I just haven't had to. I have not had to lubricate it. The knife came well lubed. And, uh, you know, the blades just slide really, really smoothly. I really like that a lot. You've got 
an extra little bit of grinding out on this G10 here. So there's no reason you can't get your thumb in there to flick this thing out. It's just, you know, they could have just left the grind the way it was without putting in this little shallow ground out part, but they didn't. They put it in there anyways, and it just flies out. Um, and yeah, it works just as well with the left hand because they put the left stud in there. I am just terrible at flicking my left thumb. I don't know why, because I am, I grew up left-handed as a child. And as soon as I started getting into sports or anything, I got all my brother's hand-me-downs and they're all right-handed, three older brothers. So I became quite ambidextrous. And for flicking knives with my thumb, I'm better at it with my right hand for some reason. I find knives to be more comfortable, to feel more natural in my left hand. But uh, to open it, I just am better at it with my right. And that's just the way it is. But check out all that texture in that G10. They've milled that to look something like a pineapple texture. I think it looks really, really sharp. Uh, you've got a backspacer made of G10, a big chunk so that the liner, uh, the liner, so that the lanyard hole goes right through like a tunnel. Nice generous size, you can fit the thickest paracord you want through there, no problem at all. Um, the back spacer is fit really, really well. It's a nice and smooth reading from this G10 to the liner to the G10 back to the other side for the frame. And it feels so nice. Stone wash on this back side of the frame, stone wash on the clip. And then you've got your satin blade. It really, really sharp indeed. Uh, it's got this extra texture up here that I, I didn't mention before. It just gives that added little look to it. This is a really nice knife. Um, I'm one of those guys who's not afraid of the weight of a knife at all. Uh, afraid's the wrong word, isn't it? Um, I don't mind if a knife is really, really heavy, uh, because I'm not going to, I'm going to EDC this thing, um, 99 times out of a hundred, I'm just going to EDC it, which means it sits in my pocket. I can handle eight ounces in my pocket. I'm, I'm, yeah, it's just not a problem. Not really. Um, and if I was to hard use this thing, I found out. I don't mind the weight for that either. I held it in my hand. I used one of these for half, the orange one, for about half an hour straight, cutting in wood, doing all kinds of stuff, taking down trims and limbs from our small apple tree because it was rotting in the middle, so we're taking it down. And I decided to use my knife to do a lot of it. Uh, grab it right here with these two fingers and the rest of the hand back here and did some chopping into the wood and it just works great. The weight of this blade just pulls into the wood. I know I don't have the wood here to show you, but you just got to take my word for it. This knife can work hard and my hand didn't get too tired. I mean, there's a lot lighter, smaller knives where my hand got tired much more. If it's too small, it just creates hot spots. If it has some bad shape to it, it creates hot spots. This thing's just smooth everywhere and it just fits in the hand nice. This jimping here is functional. It's nice and smooth, slow looping, looping, loping limp jimps, but they work and you, you get a really good hold onto the knife. You don't need little sharp serrations for, you know, for your jimping for it to work. Although some knives have really thin, fine serrations and that works too on those knives. What Ganzo decided to do on this knife just works and it works so well. They could have made this frame on this outside edge a little bit lighter and they could have, um, you know, milled some of it out. I'm going to try to get some light in here. Maybe you'll be able to see right into there. Um, I don't know if you can see into there or not. There you go on that angle. They did not mill out anything. Not on the liner side and not on the other side. Um, and so that's just, it just is what it is. It's an eight ounce knife. Um, really, really feels nice in the hand. I just can't get over how nice it feels. Uh, this nice flat head screw for this pivot. Um, 
feels really, really good. The, uh, the backstop pin looks small, but there's a reason it looks small. Because the rest of the knife is so big. <laughs> but in reality, that pin is not too small. It's, it's a decent, it's an adequate pin. Um, a larger one might make you feel a little more confident, but it's just fine. Look where the lockup is. The lockup is just right around the, the close edge of the liner lock, the frame lock, comes right about to the middle of the knife. And then the uh, knife itself comes and on my, the orange one, it's lined up perfectly, centered just perfectly. This green one is just slightly to the right and it could move over just a little bit. I think this pivot just needs a slight adjustment. Like I said, I've not adjusted either one of these. And you know, it's funny that I used the orange one for my really heavy testing on it and it's the one that's right down the middle. But isn't that a good looking knife? The Ganzo G723, no, sorry, 22. I really, really like this knife and I like it a lot. I've got, uh, I just got to say that if you don't have one and you're willing to take the leap into a heavier knife, check this one out. Uh, if you like this video, please subscribe if you think I've earned your subscription. And if I haven't earned your subscription, tell me what I can do to do that. Share this video with your friends, click on that uh, thumbs up and give me a like, and please say something in the comments. Tell me what you want to know, tell me what you want to hear about, tell me if there's a knife out there that I haven't reviewed that you think I should review. Um, tell me I'm totally all wet and totally wrong about this knife. I, I accept any and every comment as long as they're put in respectfully and, uh, you know, try to be well spoken and uh, your comments will be heard. But as long as you make sure you always cut towards your chum and not your thumb, and all will be good. Thanks for watching. Bye now.